it's a real sad statement, or one aspect of our, our contemporary culture. So what the rite of passage does, again, in terms of a ceremony, is it, it takes someone, let's, let's take boys to men, it takes elders to, um, to do this kind of ceremony where the boy is given certain tasks, and depending upon the culture, they could be fairly um, tame, you know, not real um, life-threatening kind of tasks, all the way to harsher environments where people live in harsher environments where the boys, re they really have to be men in the, in the strongest sense of the word. Uh, Tahiti, for instance, um, there's probably not a whole lot to the rite of passage, you know, everything was pretty well given and, and back when. Whereas someplace like, as I, my understanding is, someplace like uh, Tonga or some of the islands where the environment is very, very harsh, the boys have to go through some um, pretty difficult tasks to get to the place where then they could be honored. Um, there's a wonderful book, uh, story, uh, movie called The Emerald Forest. It's one of my favorites. And um, the, in that, there's a, a, a Caucasian boy who's kidnapped by the tribe. The father's in charge of clearing a lot of the trees in the Amazon. And this boy's kidnapped, and um, the father, of course, searches for him for years. The boy was like six years old, and he doesn't get to him until he's 16. But they flash from that, that scene to where the boy is now a teenager. And then he's taken out away with the men, out into the forest, away from the camp. And there's this wonderful, wonderful scene where after he goes through some pretty excruciating challenges and passes them successfully, he's now declared a man. He goes back. This one scene is just so powerful, it gives me chills. He goes back, and there he goes back to the encampment where the tribe is, and his mother's standing there. And the chief of the tribe, who facilitated the ceremony and led the ceremony, says, uh, here's your boy. And the mother, and this is all scripted, you know, this is all, this is how it's done. The mother says, my boy is dead. Wonderful, wonderful piece. You know, the metaphor being, yeah, the, there's no more boy. This, this guy's a man. So to have something that rich and that tied in. But again, we don't have a common culture here in Western civilization either. That's part of the difficulty. There's some good work being done now from my understanding. And I can't give you references right off the top of my head. I'd have to research them again. But there are some good work where there's um, um, organizations that are offering um, there's one through, I believe it's the um, Mankind Project called Boys to Men. Uh, man, MKP.org is, is um, where somebody's interested can look that up. And I think it's called BOYZ, Boys to Men, and where they do um, take boys and take them out into the wilderness and teach them and work with them, etc., and give them some challenge like Vision Quest, etc., that they can do. A um, good friend of mine does uh, some of these on occasion when called to do it, Shaman in Sedona. So there, there are places where this can be done, and um, I uh, really admire, especially there's so many single mothers these days, that if there's a mother that knows that she can't provide, just like I couldn't for my daughter, provide for her sons, um, it would be in their best interests as mothers to seek out this kind of a, a rite of passage for their boys. Um, it's not something a mom can do, it's just the way things are, just like it's not something a father could do with a teenage girl. Um, they're, they're taught, males, uh, male initiation, the, the importance is they're taught the culture, they're taught the secrets, they're taught the stories that they will then pass on. Again, and this, these are in indigenous cultures where the stories have been handed down generation after generation, sometimes literally thousands and thousands of years. Um, it also helps them, it gives them a compass. It gives them a compass, some, some direction to go in. It, it is honoring these, these young men from the elders, you know, and that as, uh, speaking as an elder, because I can rightfully say that after 55, um, speaking as an elder, there's something about honoring younger men, and that's in, not that I do initiations myself, I don't do those or, or sponsor them particularly. I would seek out uh, my friend in Sedona or some organization if I was called to do that. But what I can do and what men can do uh, who have passed a certain age, I'd say, you know, again, 30, but, you know, upwards 40, 45, start to get a little gray hair, that kind of thing, is just every opportunity to, to express admiration to younger men, to really reinforce that. There's something that when, when you're honored by an older man as a young man, it, it, it sticks. There's something about it that sticks. 
like maybe the kids that have gotten in trouble. I have a good friend in uh, Australia that went through that. He was um, 16 and he was in and out. Of, and he's fine, but he's told this story publicly, so I know it. His name's Jeremy. Uh, uh, he was, um, didn't know who he was, his identity, and that's another earmark of um, uh, why it's important for males, is you, you develop an identity. You're, you're really clearly a man because you've gone through this rite of passage. You know, it isn't this vague thing or this washed out sort of deal. Um, this friend Jeremy went to, uh, what happened for him is that at about age 16, he'd been in trouble with the law, but he was telling me, he says, I didn't know who I was. You know, I have these dark eyes, but I've got white skin. I just didn't know. And then what happened is an uncle came and got him out of juvenile hall. And the uncle is Aborigine. And he says, you never knew your father, but that was my brother. So you're, you're part Aborigine and, and invited him to come up or took him, one of the two, took him up to what he calls the land up in northern Queensland in Australia. And there Jeremy went through um, a lot of teaching and training about this lineage that he never had any clue about. And as he said, then I got to know who I was. So there's an that, that's, that's, that's example of why I think it's important to men. Now this uh, Jeremy's like 26 just a, an amazing young man, and again, somebody I truly do admire, and I have the honor to work with. He's a fantastic storyteller, didgeridoo player. He participates in some of the ceremonies uh, that we do in Australia. He's touring, in fact, the United States right now, but that's not relevant. Um, just that's what, that's what helps us to, to... I know from my own experience, I, I wandered for a long time not, not knowing who I was. It took me, I think, into my 30s before I finally got a clear idea and it took that long versus maybe at 16 in another world, if you will. You know, had I been pulled out of the world, <laughs> the usual world, and taken into the world that's timeless and taught stories, you know, it wasn't possible given the setup and family and all that. But it would just be a different, uh, it would be a different uh, me now, I think. You know, it's, so that's, those are some of the things I think that are important for male initiations. Women, their bodies tell them when they've sort of made that passage, although again, I think it's important that elders for females too are there to guide and instruct and teach them stories, etc., etc. But we as men, we don't have that, that demarcation. Yeah, you women grow pubic hair and beards and stuff like that, but that's a slow process, whereas a woman, when she first menstruates, oh, okay, there's something going on here internally. Whereas men don't have that internal body clock that says, okay, now this is an important passage. And we have other rites of passage too, you know, there's, I, I'm, uh, I stutter a little bit when I say this, but I'm gonna be turning 60 pretty soon. And that's just fun, I'm still like, it's still working me like 60, what does that mean? But I've decided a couple things I wanna do. And I don't make this as a promise because it scares the dickens out of me, but I'd like to skydive. I've never done that. So at 60, I'd like to do that as my ceremony. But also I thought, you know, I'm going to call some of my men friends because I've done a lot of work with men and men's groups. And I'm going to say, I'd like you to design and just step back and not be the facilitator. I said, I'd like a ceremony for my passage into, into 60. And it feels real good. It's a little scary, you know, to ask somebody else to do it because I'm the guy that does it all the time. But, you know, I'm willing to do that because I think that would be cool and ask for what you want. And it would be of honoring that, not just me, but honoring that me in that passage.